Welcome back to Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show all about premium cigars. And speaking of premium cigars, today we have a very, very special treat for you. Uh, we have managed to uh, accumulate and uh, hoard probably the last remaining La Gloria Cobana made in Miami. These cigars are about 11 years old. And we don't have a whole heck of a lot of them, but uh, and they are available probably exclusively at Cigar Cigar stores located in our viewing audience. Uh, we're very pleased to have Michael back with us, as you recall from the last few weeks. You didn't say his last name because he can't pronounce it. Giannini. Giannini. I know his last name. I've known him for 20 years. Good Irish name. Yeah. 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 And, uh, panel, welcome back. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to I be hope, here. Uh, hope everybody has enjoyed the uh, the warm weather so far. Yes, it's very I hot. Hope you've all Absolutely. ordered your uh, series tickets for the Phillies. Yes. Oh, sure. nope. No, no Phillies yeah. tickets. No, I got. You got them. Good. Yeah. good. They'll be rare souvenirs. How about them finals? <laughs> what finals? That's long over. Oh yeah. And a better team won. <laughs> Funny how that what works. What else are talking about? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Let's smoke. Oh, uh, Everybody's already smoking. Not me. Couldn't well, wait. We oh, couldn't wait. wait. I'm couldn't so wait proud of you, Paul. I'm the, I'm I finally found once in my life. I'm he the last one to light up. Yes. Finally found a cigar almost as old as me. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh. No. That was funny. Okay. It's true. Oh, look at that. Right, light up your Glorious. This model is called the uh, Gloria Extra, right? Correct. Gloria. It's a uh, little fatter than a Lonsdale and a little thinner than a Toro. And it's actually my kind of size. I like this kind of a size. This is like a perfect size. So really, I'm quite interested to see how you got these because I have a little stash hidden and uh, I have to go check it when I get back, Arthur. Wow. I, was say, yeah. back. Oh. I, I can save you the trouble, Michael. They're gone. Oh, yeah. uh, no. They're gone. Them. Like oh, I said, we that'd be the perfect time for your tundra. story. Well, why do you have a but, stash of these? I'm they, curious. Right, well, because, uh, you know what, it's, you know, you kind of save some stuff and... Uh, it's what you do as a cigar collector, and I like keeping somebody else stuff around. I, I have, uh, you know, my humidor is endless, um, even though your humidor is very, very, very large. Yours is bigger. Yes. And uh, <laughs> he's Italian. Got a whole company. Oh, <laughs> Lots of factories. And so, but I like to keep some of these around. So shout out to Cameron Shaw. I know he hooked you guys up with for some of these. Thanks, Cameron. Cameron. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you. Um, it's neat to be able to smoke these uh, with you guys and share them. Um, this is uh, pretty phenomenal, from what I remember. Mm -hmm. You know, right, the last batch, yeah. one of the last yeah. batches out of uh, our Credit Dutch Cigar Factory in La Havana. Um, still there, but we yeah. don't run it anymore just because it just got way too expensive to make cigars in La Havana. And uh, to bring them to the market and be able to have them at a reasonable price, you know, we were able to uh, just move our operation to Dominican. I know this is a debate that everybody's had. I knew this was coming. But every time I'm out in the road, everybody asks, hey, I like the Miamis versus the Dominicans. And, you know, a couple things I can tell you about that. It's the same tobacco that we use. This is a blend of Ecuador and Sumatra. Um, it is a broadleaf binder and Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers. Basically, that's, why that's I like what the it. blend is. So, but, but what's, here's the secret about these two ways you can tell these are Miami. One, Obviously, it's on the box. That's no way. Right? It'll That's say made in Miami. I secondly, didn't even see that. you can see it in the front panel to you. And then, secondly, what we did to kind of distinguish them a little bit is you can notice that these cigars are all round. The Dominican versions are slightly, oh, yeah. slightly yeah. box pressed. Yeah, so very light you press. can just kind of tell that. But light that's press. the only real yeah. difference between the two. The other big difference is, you know, in Miami, we had a basically a 10 foot by 4 foot humidor that we would actually have our rollers. So we had probably about 20. 20 rollers in Miami, and so we'd collect the production for the day, and we'd put it in this tiny little humidor and age in there for about three to four weeks. So that's how that worked. Dominican, we have a much, much bigger yeah. operation. We have <laughs> about 200 rollers that roll cigars, and so they sit in the aging room for a little bit longer. So, you know, it, there's a lot of debates in the cigar industry. How long do you age a cigar? I mean, for us, these are four to five year old filler leaves and wrappers, and so. All the aging's been done. Really what we try to do in the humidor is just equalize all the tobaccos because mm -hmm. the Lajeros that we use that are Nicaraguan hold a lot more moisture. So what we try to do is just equalize all of the tobaccos around it so they all have one consistent humidity level. And then once we hit that, depending on the time that takes, usually about three weeks or so, 
it gets put into the boxes and it comes to you guys. Like so. You said the Lajaro has more moisture. Is it has that... It's a thicker tobacco, and you can tell Lajaros Dark because they, they're, they're much darker. Um, they're fermented that way. They're grown that way. It's usually the top part of the plant, and so that holds all the moisture. So all the other fillers that we put around it and the binders, etc., you have to let that tobacco equalize so you can actually burn it. So, you know, some people like taking cigars right off the bench. And the problem with that is all the tobaccos have an equalized. Right, so they don't burn the same. They don't want burn, mm -hmm. exactly. All right, I, I, have, I, you're certainly an expert in the field, no pun intended. <laughs> is there such a thing as a statue of limitations on cigar BS? You all know what BS means, right? I can't say the word. <laughs> is, there a statue? is it like 10 years and all bets are off, would you say? Sure. Okay. I we must, can make up that rule right now. Good. <laughs> it's the wall. But I must tell this story. Back in the 90s, people, <laughs> you alluded to it, people used to say the ones in Miami are the better tasting cigars. So we had a couple in, in our Horsham store, we had a couple really dyed in the wool, fervent, laborious smokers. And they just insisted, because we used to carry side, almost side by side, Dominican and, 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 and the made in Miami. Now, I, I guess some of you have figured out where this is going. Mm -hmm. So these couple of very dyed in the wool smokers that would give me a hard time every time they come in. And, we, and the Miami ones were always scarcer than the Dominican ones because, as Michael said, the scarcity of rollers in Miami and the cost of making them in Miami versus the Dominican. But one day I just had it up to here. I used to have a little more hair, too. She had it up to here, though. So, I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think it was ever up to here. Up to I had my here. pompadour. It might have been like up to here. Anyway, so one day I just got tired of this. And I took a size and I just switched all the cigars. I took all the Miami and put them in the Dominican box and all the Dominican and put them in the Miami box. <laughs> and they just up and down swore that the ones in the Miami box were superior to the ones in the Dominican box, even though I had made the switch. So that just shows you that the power of suggestion sometimes can influence decisions of, about what to smoke and probably many other things. Yeah. But on the other hand, yeah. on the other hand, uh -oh. in the case of these cigars, yeah. whether they come from Miami or the Dominican Republic, Correct. eleven years yeah, has boxing. worked. Wonderfully magic on them. Uh, yeah, because the, the cigars melding in the box together have had a time to, you know, the oils evaporate you, you, more uniform, the taste mellows out if there's a little stronger great. taste or a young taste to it. So, so, yeah, after 11 years, you don't want to wait too much longer. I mean, aging a cigar like this for 20 years is not going to make it any better. So it's at probably right at the peak. Absolutely. Right now. You know, it's not like red wine or fine Bordeaux where you can age it 30 or 40 years. You know, cigars are a little bit different. But it, at 11 years, it's, it's probably Phenomenal. right there. So the key to take away from this is the 11 years, not the Miami. Hmm? Yep. The key to take away from this is that to buy these because they've been aged. They're vintage yeah. cigars. They've been aged for 11 years, not just because they're made. Yeah. Now, if you like to collect um, and you like stuff that are rare, then buy them because they're hey, Miami boxes are scarce. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but but there are people, there are people that are like that. Yeah. If you yeah. just want to smoke something that's special because it's, very good. it's special, then smoke it because it's 11 years old. And, and I believe to begin with. I believe we're not we're not charging any kind of premium for that, are no. we? No, no. We're just selling with the regular whatever yeah. this model sells we, for. We almost gave them away. Wow. Yeah, really? almost by accident. Whoa. How many boxes do you have? I, I might want to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you such a deal. <laughs> such a deal. I'd like to know about the band real quick. Is that so? So the band itself, actually, I did some research probably about geez about 10 years ago because. What's on the box, the best on the box has got, you know, La Gloria Cabana means that when you smoke this cigar, you're ascending into heaven. That's why you have the Lady of Cherubs. Uh, that is artwork from the Victorian era, and the artwork on the band now is from the Art Deco period. And so I actually spent an entire summer, geez, about 10, 15 years ago, trying to find out actually who actually created that art and who created this art. And what I came down to, I found this, this museum guy in California who was an expert on all these bands, and he basically said, you'll never find out because all those records are gone. Wow. And he's like, but you know, you have beautiful artwork, which I absolutely agree with. But what's unique about it is, um, you know, the lady's actually holding a pack of cigarettes and matches. And what yeah, I was able to cool. find out was, and this is how simple the guys back in the day were 100 years ago, 
guy had a lady on the box and he needed to put a band on it. And actually what they would do, this is what I found out, what they were able to do is to prevent counterfeiting in cigarettes, they'd actually take these bands and wrap them around 50 cigarettes and they would change them consistently. So this guy basically said, Jose Rocha basically said, you know what, I got a, a, a band here and I got a band here with a lady, let me put them together. Hmm. And we would never do that today because it'd have to be the same art. And that's kind of the beauty of the artwork of cigars. That you know, it's just become one of these iconic things, and I believe this is one of the few ladies on a cigar band. And this is my mistress; uh, she treats me very well, and, uh, <laughs> and I actually love the, the band. I have a lot of fun working with this. Just to get back a little bit to to the cigars, I mean, back to the Miami stuff. I mean, I worked in Miami for ten years. I worked out at a factory there. It's you know, it is one of the mystiques of it was that you could actually come and see the rollers yeah. rolling cigars yeah. there. Yeah. The problem that we had was as we were trying to keep up with production, it's we would actually open up storefronts and storefronts and storefronts, and it just got really, really difficult to make enough cigars to meet the demand for the marketplace. And we made a, a, a smart decision that you know, to keep the demand going, that we'd actually have to move our operations to Dominican so we could cut, actually keep cigars being produced. We keep the same amount of meticulous um, detail to what we've done originally in Miami. I mean, we took all that down to our factories in 96 and 97. It took us a while to figure out how to train the rollers, how to roll it the way we wanted it. They're rolling great cigars. The trick for me, though, I think why these cigars are so good 11 years later, I found, you know, you've always heard 70% humidity, 70% moisture in a cigar. I actually like them on the drier side. Uh, I like them at 65. English style. English style. Exactly. Yeah. And I think because of the heavy tobaccos that we use for the La Gloria blend, it actually fully actualizes it. And that's what I'm tasting right now. These are 11 years old. There's a little bit less moisture in this cigar uh -huh. than when they were originally rolled sure. because there was more moisture in that, in that cigar. So over time what happens is the tobaccos have equalized, the moisture levels have, have decreased, and the intensity of the flavors have increased. Yeah. Right. And that's what's really unique to me, and that's what we like to do in the factory. But the problem is, some people like them a little bit moister, some people like them a little bit drier. This is why you have humidors at home. These, you know, you guys have lots of humidors yeah. here. You, you should actually have a humidor per, per cigar that you have, and then keep the humidity level the way that you like your cigars, not like everybody else likes them. Yes. So the 70-70 rule, I mean, that's, that's a basic standard rule, but... Just like you like salt on certain food, or you like pepper on certain right. food, do it to taste. I yeah. mean, this is not bouncing back as much as you want. Some guys like them super spongy. I love them like this yeah. because the flavors are just, you know, just hit your palate. More intense. Yeah. Just More intense. And I think that's what the age is. And they draw a little Oh, yeah. A little yeah. drier and draws a little easier. Absolutely. The English, uh, until just the last maybe 20 years, the typical, the typical uh, Fleet Street and the rest uh, of the fine tobacconists in London usually kept their humidors around 60, mm -hmm. 60 points of humidity. And, and the temperature rule is just a melding of the humidity and the temperature because you don't want, to, you don't want your temperature to be too warm because you'll, you'll get visitors, <laughs> the kind of visitors. Yeah. They're holy visitors. You don't want to see those guys. They're actually really holy. And the unique thing, we were talking about this in a, in a previous issue, previ previous episode, the Lajeros that we buy for this and also for the Serie are we buy from a specific farm that this gentleman has grown it for us forever. So the Lajero, we were talking about, hey, what kind of, where does this, what does this taste like? We've kept that consistent farm over time. The Sumatra wrappers have been consistent over time from back in the day when we made these in the 90s out of Miami. We've kept those recipes intact, same growers. And that's the uniqueness of this. We buy so much of this tobacco, and we let it sit in age for four to six years wow. in bales before we actually use it. And so the blend has not changed one bit, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the uniqueness of it. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah I, th I think when you buy, you know, there's a couple of very large tobacco companies in this country that do, a, a, you know, a lot of work in Nicaragua, Honduras, and, and, and the Dominican Republic. And one of the big advantages these larger companies have is they have the ability to age, you know, huge amounts of bales of tobacco, which makes for a more consistent smoke. You buy it one day and you buy it a year later, it's going to taste the same, which a lot of manufacturers, smaller manufacturers, don't have the ability because they, they just frankly don't have the capital to necessarily age their tobaccos that long or buy from the same fields or the same growers or their own fields as consistent as a couple of the larger companies, especially a company like General does, the parent company of LaGloria. So, you know, 
take that into consideration if you wonder why I bought a cigar from from you know maybe a small manufacturer and and you smoked it one day and good or bad whether you liked it or you didn't like it but six months later the cigar may taste a little bit different may not have the same complexity may not have even the same taste could even be better but the larger companies that are vertically integrated from seed to our shells have the ability to make a consistent cigar and, and the taste rarely I mean this La Gloria you know maintained this taste profile for as long as I can remember and uh, you know unlike some companies that buy up other companies this was an independent company up until about 15 years ago 2001 okay so yes. 12 14. Years, uh, 14 years ago it wasn't off by much and general purchased a company from a, a fine gentleman in <coughs> our, in our uh, business Ernesto Carrillo I almost said Giannini <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, he stayed with the company for five years? Well, London? he left in 2009. 2009, okay. And him and I worked together yeah. for a long, 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 long time. And he's a great, great guy. Very great good friend of mine. Yeah, yes. great individual. I remember him when. And, 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 you know, it's a tribute to not only Ernesto, but a tribute to General because they have continued the tradition. These cigars are the same cigars, and if anything, even more consistent because of the, the, the vast size that General Tobacco has. So I think it's time, we're going to run out of time again, so it's time for us to uh, give our first impressions. I'm three quarters of the way done, first impressions. All right, give us our second and third impressions. <laughs> well, you're a power hitter. What do you want from me? That means Good. Rob, why don't you start it off then? I like the cigar a lot. Um, it's La Gloria. You know, we going to, it's... It's your strength enough, profile. It's enough, it's enough it's set. It's perfect. And it's, it's got a Sumatra wrapper on it. Yeah. It's got a Sumatra wrapper on it. It's, it's good. Miss <laughs> T? Well, Gloria Cubana is one of my favorite brands, so, you know, names. Um, it is. I always like Gloria. Um, this is phenomenal. You have to at least try it one time. I'm going to get one just to keep it in my humidor. I'm not ever smoking it. It's just going to sit there. Um, it's smooth. It's creamy. It's tasty. Um, it's not overpowering, maybe because it's 11 years, you know, mellow, but it's, it's, it's just a fabulous cigar. Look at the construction. Look how beautiful that's burning. Let's see how long I can get that ash down. I think you'll get it down very far. All right. Yeah. All right. We doing initial or complete? No, we're doing own? complete. I did complete. Uh, when, when I f uh, uh, first, thank you very much. First puff, um, I thought it was going to be a, like a massive powerhouse. Yeah. And then retro hail, I'm like, whoa! I felt a ton of spice yep. right up front. Absolutely. Um, definitely mellowed out. I'm getting almost a brown sugar or molasses on the retro hail, mm. um, and I don't always, I don't always get all those flavors. But for the, somehow, I'm getting in this one. Um, also, I find it very earthy, and there is a little, a little bit of spice in it, just a little. Well, you can't have a Sumatra wrapper without without some spice. Yeah. Well, then I'm right. Of course, well, I wouldn't go right. that far. <laughs> I mean, let's just compromise that what he said was correct and what you said is okay. <laughs> huh? That's a compromise. Yeah. I wasn't listening. Just to say you. yes. I didn't hear anything. Word you said. Just say yes. Paul, <clears throat> I love it. I've always liked it. I liked it when it was new. I liked it at 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I will say that. This vintage, at, at this time, uh, the Sumatra wrapper came from a particular farm that I know and love very much. It was sold through a broker, but it was from a farm that's near and dear to my heart. In Sumatra? No. No, the one, it's, the it's one, where, you, the one where you, um, they named the town, the street town. No, that's no, in Nicaragua. That no, the, the Paul Major town. That's Nicaragua. No, that's Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Yeah. This it's rap, Paul Major this, Village. This, oh, village. Oh, oh, is it Paul Majorville? Paul Majorville. Oh, Majorville. Oh. But, no, this this rapper came from the Arai family farm. Uh, As for me, whatever that might be worth, uh, those of you who've watched our program over the, I can almost say now, years, know that uh, as I've gotten older, my, my tastes have gone to more milder cigars. I wasn't a real, I used to like real heavy cigars. And this cigar originally was a heavier cigar. Uh, now, with the mellowing and, and the taste that's come into the cigar, that the blend is perfectly mellowed out, I love the cigar. 
I love this cigar. It's phenomenal. So, did I say I love this cigar? Oh, you can say it again. Say it again. I love this cigar. There you go. Well, here's here's the other thing, Arthur, and I and I think why you all like this cigar a lot is, you know, it's funny. You know, everybody's going to bigger ring gauges, and yeah. this is not a traditional size you would see. But what is the size again? I'm sorry. This is a Glory Extra. But what, but it's, what it's like six and three quarters by forty six. Perfect so it's size. It's like a bigger Lonsdale size. Yeah, size. I love it. And you Perfect don't size. see a lot of people smoking this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The uh, Glorious, which is you know, T, I know you like uh, basically Corona sizes. Yes. It's unique that you can get a lot of flavor out of a smaller ring gauge cigar because you can compact a lot of right. the intense tobaccos in there, mm -hmm. where it's a little bit harder to do in the bigger ones, and that's a whole other conversation in order of Powering to do that. But to me, phys you know, the physics of this is just you can get an intensity of flavors, and I think that's one of the reasons why this is such a unique thing. And you guys got the glory section, and I smiled when Rob, you showed me in, the, in your humidor. I'm yeah. like, wow, that's a great size to have. Yeah. Because it's, this size is not so popular right these days with everybody. Everybody right. has bigger <coughs> ages, and that's kind of the trend in the marketplace. But this is really something you should try. Again, we were talking about, you know, mm -hmm. you, have, you have your biases on specific sizes in different places where you smoke. Retrain your mind. Try something like this. You'll be pleasantly surprised how, oh, sure. how good yes. this is for a small yeah. ring age. Mm -hmm. And again, just to remind me, do you recall what the price point is on this? Five fifty nine. Holy mackerel. Wow. And that's the original price. We have not, there's no premium on this. It's just being sold at the regular price. So, five fifty nine. dollars it's a heck of a buy. Mm -hmm. Can I say a hell of a buy? No, sure. you I'll said heck. Oh, it's you a hell of a buy. I did say that. You said heck. I can. Heck is good. <laughs> okay, what do you want to do now? Well, I don't know. Yeah, we have a special going on with General. Yeah, can we say it? Oh, yeah. yeah, tell us about the specials. Any general products, which include, I'm going to have to look at this, the Glory Cabana, Macanudo, Partagas Excalibur Punch, Cohiba CAO, and Dunhill. Um, if you buy any three. Tarano. Really Keep not. moving. Keep moving. If you buy any three, you'll get an, either a CAO Columbia or a, a La Gloria Esteli. Wow. And that's through the end of halfway through July. Wait, which one is the Esteli and uh, It's a... It's a part of this extra four day. When did that change? No, what are you talking about? I think just now. It's always been that way. Has it? No. No. It has yes. Not. It has. All right, so what's the deals again? Because <laughs> I'm interested. Buy three, get one. Oh, cool. It's buy three, get one free. Is it at the register? Yeah. We'll give you one little figure. At the register. Your choice. You can old. choose at the register. Let's give them three and one. Okay. We are doing three and one. Don't have to change the post, then. That's fine. What poster? The, the poster that General made. Yeah. Poster that General made said four. But okay, I think we it's, can do three. I think it's That's time. Fine. I think it's time to go around. It's been three for a while. Yeah. No, it's been. Four. I like when we. Oh my before. God! You guys oh, really need to pay attention. Uh, I'm just reading what the artwork says. That's all. Artwork does say. Surprise well, you the here's, here's, Don't blame me for Here's it. the deal. We decided that buy four get one free was nice, and that buy three get one free would be even better. That's so fun. that's what we're doing. Okay. That's a great Because we just roll that way. That's right, Paul. That's the that's way we roll. You let so them we know. Again, want to remind everybody to, uh, <laughs> you know, we love it when you come into one of our 10 stores, kind of all over the geographic area. Yeah, I love it when I'm you come I'm sure the me. stores are being displayed on the screen as we they speak. They do. Hmm? People come from Frazier to come here to see me. Oh my God! They do. Please stop. They Please stop. do. Just they and do. that's why. And I can't. thank you very much. They travel much. all the way from yeah. Kensington to see you. <laughs> Kensington. <laughs> <laughs> but we stop. ask you, we implore you to not only, you know, come to us, but if it's not convenient to come to us, please support your local brick and mortar store. Well, I think it's time to go around the table and put some numbers on this, maybe. I'm gonna give it a 9.0. Paul? I'm right there. 9.0. Hate to agree with you. Nope. 9.5. Oh. oh. 875. Eight, oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Come on. That's a great rating. It's a great rating. 875. I give it a 9.25. Do the math. Let me you tabulate this. That. It comes to 9.37.8. 9.1. <laughs> and I'm going to say. You're not allowed to rate that. You're not allowed to rate that. These are the last of the last. So if you're a collector out there, yeah. you're remembering your old yep. glorious yeah, Mark. Miami, and you're a big fan of the Miami stuff, it's a great collector's item. And again, I got to check to make sure you didn't take my take stash. Yours, yeah. so. They're gone. Okay, so there you go. 
Yeah, we no drove prints. down to Virginia. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no prints were left. <laughs> this, this was like a very uh, stealthy operation. Gloves were used, trucks, license plates were covered, the whole schmear, gone. Well, here's what I would say. I'm really honored that you guys are selling these. You know, I've known Arthur for a long time, and you guys as well, around the table. So I'm really honored to have a great home, and hopefully it'll have a great home in your home. <laughs> very good. Huh? Your severance package is very generous. Don't worry about it. And we always have a store, so you know. There you go. We always have someone to Well, what can I say? I hope you at home are enjoying as much of this as we, we do presenting it to you. And I just want to thank everybody for the many thousands of, of uh, emails and responses that we got. And I must now confess that there'll be no more hats. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no more hats. I'm giving in to public pressure. But there's one, one guy. guy. Well, it's a lot of and one guy. Guys. Wait, one guy and his wife. And his wife. Oh, that's so right. that's two people. emails uh, too. That's two guys. Bottom line is, they think I'm more funny without my hat on. I myself think I'm funny just waking up in the morning. Hmm? So do we. But, I'm trying to, trying to think oh, yeah, and you, and you shaved the mustache, too. I shaved my mustache. And nobody even knows. about that, too. People were saying that. We, yeah. have a, we have a studio audience today. We have a studio, a live yeah, studio Jenny. audience. Hey. Hey. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. How are you? Mm -hmm. you say hi. Hi. Oh, see? <laughs> there you go. That's proof. <laughs> She's really here. So, she is here. <laughs> so, as we come to an end of another show... Is it really? I can't I just, I just want to send out a special, again, thanks... And in, in, from all of us to the late Bruce Klein, who helped make us what we are today, yes. whatever that is. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> Bruce, happy sailing. Thank you. My hair Time to say goodbye, fans. Hi, Mom. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Smoke off. Smoke, 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 smoke happy. Ciao for now, everybody. Oh, yeah, that's a ciao for now, guys. Aren't you going to say hi, Dad? I, oh, hi, Dad. Mom. We thank you very well, very much for watching again, and we hope you'll uh, tune us in I'm next week. This out. Remember, there's a repeat Saturday night at eight o'clock. If you miss us now, bye. 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 It was the air date, I think, May 16th. Our stomach goes right. We're talking, right? Look, we're talking. You hear me say? This is what she remembers look, of the did. show. I did. You hear me say something? Ask her what the car we reviewed. It was you won't remember. She remember my stomach gurgling. You, I say something, and then his stomach goes, and then I go, "What was that?" And then we all start. You can really hear his stomach go. Burr. I have thick skin. I don't care. What cigar was it? I don't remember. This is Glenn Loop, Executive Director at Cigar Rights of America a grassroots movement designed and in existence to defend your ability to enjoy great premium handmade cigars. We truly live in a renaissance of great cigar making. Right now some of the greatest blends in the history of this wonderful industry are on the market. They're in these amazing humidors all around us. They're in your local cigar shop. Now they're under attack, whether it's smoking bans and taxation at the state level or a city hall wanting to put new regulations on your ability to enjoy cigars, or what's going on in Washington, D.C. with the proposed federal regulation of this amazing industry. This needs to stop. You need to be a part of this process.